Hey everyone, Tim with Collect Jurassic, back with another very exciting video review. Today we're going to be looking at the Jurassic World Legacy Collection Brachiosaurus figure sent to us from Mattel. Huge thanks to Mattel for sending us this figure. We work really hard here at Collect Jurassic to bring you guys all the news and updates and uh, toy reviews. So, you know, seeing that acknowledged by Mattel and, uh, you know, them sending us this amazing gift that we can share with you is super, super exciting. So, um, without further ado, let's get started. So, first things first, this figure is large. The box is large. So this review is going to be a little different. Uh, I'm going to try to fit the whole thing in camera and I'll do my best. But as you can see, the box is uh, very detailed. We have tons of artwork on the box that we've covered before on the site, but now we can really get the details here uh, on video in 4K. You can see there's some amazing detail on the front. Everything, every single blade of grass, every single leaf on every palm is fleshed out and detailed in brilliant color. And of course, Brachiosaurus itself looks amazing. Every wrinkle is there, movie accurate design. It looks so cool. Um, obviously, we also have some really cool parts of the back scene behind the Brachiosaur. Talking about the lagoon with the Brachiosaurs, the Parasaurolophuses. Um, you know, in person, the detail still on these pops, probably more than it ever did in the movie. Uh, you know, in the movie, it was kind of in the background. So it looks really nice here. And then you also have the characters in the foreground as well. Uh, Hammond, Ellie, and Alan all kind of taking the Brachiosaur in just like the movie and again they are rendered in perfect detail. Elsewhere on the box you can go ahead and tip it the back of it on its side to kind of get another view, kind of another front to the box and this side of the box is especially epic because it, gets, it shows the true length of this figure even disassembled um, but I really like this sort of um, you know, view of the toy as well. Even though there's not those um, human characters here, it still looks really great. Elsewhere on the box, we have a nice big Legacy Collection logo um, amidst a dark background, which I think is just, you know, very uh, elegant, very uh, high-end looking for such a large toy. And uh, we also have some information on the sides, really just repeating that you can download the app, more pictures, insets of uh, the, the kid playing with the toy. Just some call-outs about posability. And of course, on the bottom, we have some very limited, um, you know, one-time assembly instructions, all the legalese, all that good stuff. And then, of course, the barcode for those of you who are interested in seeing that barcode. Um, but yeah, box, uh, got all the art on it, got measurements. Um, it's a great box. Definitely going to be keeping this one, um, you know, after the review is over. But without further ado, let's go ahead and open this up. Let me go ahead and grab my knife here and we'll start opening it from this end. Hopefully there's not a right or wrong end to be opening this toy from, but something tells me that it probably should be fine. But again, I, want to do, I do want to keep this box. So I'm going to try to be pretty careful as I open it. So bear with me, but this shouldn't be that much of a laborious opening since the thing comes in pieces. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull what we can out. Looks like we got a cardboard insert and wow the figure itself. Oh my gosh. This must be the main body. Looks like we have a tail in here as well and the head is also all in there. So I think that's it for the figure. I think it's all kind of um packed in there with uh, cardboard um, so there's not a lot of rubbing going on. You can go ahead and stick the cardboard back in the box and close it up. And then we'll go ahead and put the box aside for now and uh, put together the figure. All right, so looks like we have tail here, its own bag. Tail looks like it's its own solid plastic. Looks like there might be some, a little bit of paint on there, a little bit of brown flecking, a nice big um, hinge as well that we'll go ahead and um, put into the Brachiosaurus. Next up, let's see. Let's see if I can get the head out of here. Head is actually in the bag with the body. Uh, double wrapped a little bit. Let me go ahead and take the whole body out of there. Oh my gosh. This thing looks awesome. Okay. So that bag is out. 
There's the main body. And now the head. It's actually in another tape bag. Whoa! These don't fall over on me. Kind of amazing how they got all these huge pieces crammed in that box. And there is the head. Lots of paint detail on that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click this in. Hopefully pretty stupid proof. Let's push it in, right? I'm trying to see if there's a, yep, there we go. Clicks right in. And the tail is also going to click right in down here. Again, I'm going to make sure that I'm putting it in in the correct fashion. There it is. Now I'll go ahead and grab the legs and get them posed. There she is in all of her glory. Huge figure. Uh, probably going to have to get in frame for this to really uh, explain it. So probably going to see my my mug more than you usually do. Wow. This thing is even bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, it's surprisingly light. I mean, it is hollow. Um, but, you know, I think that's probably better because if this thing was huge, I'd be worried about putting it on, on shelves. The uh, legs are all, yep, now the legs are kind of all sitting flat too. But the legs themselves are all posable. So you can um, pose all four legs. The tail, also posable. Back and forth kind of motion. Front legs posable as well. And then, of course, the neck. We have the hinge that goes all the way down and all the way up, or that far up rather. I think the head has some, I think the head has, yeah, the head has some opening, which will definitely get some uh, close-ups of how that works with the mouth. The detail on the face is amazing. So let's go ahead and talk about the mold of the figure. The sculpt. Tons of detail here, and the way that they painted it, um, you know, we really get a lot of that detail darker on top, lighter on bottom, with a sort of lighter underbelly, especially prominent on the neck, going down into the, ab the, the stomach or abdomen, chest area, um, all the way back through the tail. Well, kind of into the tail, but it's sort of a three tone coloration it has going on. Pretty subtle, but very effective. Um, you know, not a lot of paint color here, but the, the original Jurassic Park Bracky store didn't have a lot of coloration anyway. So I think they've done a good job bringing that to life. Um, man, I'm just in disbelief. I've been waiting probably 20 years. Tw how many years has it been? 26 years for a Bracky store figure. I don't think I ever imagined it would be this perfect uh, when it did come out. Um, but yeah, back to the sculpt detail. Uh, the feet look great. They each have, um, you know, toes or toenails whatever you call them um, each one's sculpted not painted but sculpted um, and then up through the neck coming to the head the head looks amazing I mean this is a Jurassic Park brachiosaur through and through um, we have the nostril detail on the crest the eyes have a nice black iris um, and the jaw itself uh, has a lighter jaw um, the tongue is painted or a separate piece of plastic one of the two, but um, great detail there. Excellent detail there. It looks like not just any Brachiosaurus, but a, you know, uh, Isla Mugler Jurassic Park Brachiosaurus, which is what we want from this figure. Um, uh, but yeah, that articulation in the jaws, definitely a nice little detail too. Um, man, this thing is huge. Let me go ahead and uh, make some comparisons with some of the other figures in the line. I'll go ahead and uh, grab a extreme chomp and t-rex put it along with the brachiosaur so you can see how small an extreme chomp and uh, tyrannosaur is next to a brachiosaur uh, it's it's huge the brachiosaur is so big um, I cannot believe how big it is so yeah tiny little t-rex next to a giant brachiosaur of course we have the tour jeep Feels very, very accurate to the film. Um, you know, definitely small compared to this giant Brachiosaur. One thing I definitely want to try is the uh, the iconic pose. Now that we have our Jeep in the frame. So that would involve putting our 
back legs up, our front legs down as they can. Yeah, it can be done. You gotta hold the tail up, but um, that's the pose. The head's probably out of frame now, but you can definitely do the pose from the movie where the racket sort of rears up on its hind legs. Um, might need some balancing on your shelf to get it to work just right, but can be done. We'll go ahead and grab Alan out of the Jeep too. Give us a nice little idea of scale with the human figure. So Alan Grant looking appropriately diminutive next to the massive, massive Brachiosaurus. Doesn't even come up to the, uh, you know, that, that joint in the leg. It's just, it's just huge. Um, it, it, yeah, I mean, look at that. Look how big <laughs> he looks staring up at the Brachiosaur. Just film accurate. I mean, size-wise, um, obviously uh, sculpt-wise, but the size really is what makes it, you know, something really special uh, as far as being film accurate. Another little comparison I had to make was one of the smallest Mattel releases would be a Consignathus. And as you can see, that thing is, uh, you know, almost not noticeable how small it is. But uh, yeah, the big and the small. Biggest and smallest in the Jurassic line, as far as indivi individual dinosaur figure sculpts. Um, but yeah, what else can I say about this figure besides how big it is? Again, I really love the sculpt and sculpt detail and what they did with it and the paint. Um, and again, I, I'm, I'm glad that it's a lighter figure. I was a little nervous about putting this on the shelf with all my other toys, but I think that this thing is going to feel like I can stick it somewhere and not worry about it toppling over and crushing toys and breaking in half. If it happens to, worst case scenario, fall off the shelf, you know, um, it's, it's going to be okay. So uh, I think that's definitely worth pointing out. But yeah, overall, this is just a stunning, stunning, stunning piece. Can't get enough of it. Um, can't wait for this thing to hit stores. Brachiosaurus, of course, is coming here in the U.S. to target stores exclusively this fall. Then today we learned it'll be coming to UK through Argos, I think is the name of the store in UK. And it'll be available there in the uh, autumn winter season uh, for $49.99 um, in the currency there. So uh, a great price for that figure here in the US at $49.99 as well. Um, great price for this massive, massive figure. I mean, this thing is huge. I can't fish my Super Colossal Rex out for my collection, but believe that it's uh, every bit as big as that. Um, it's obviously almost too big to fit on my table with my review, um, but the thing is incredible. I'm definitely going to be hopefully splicing in lots of nice detail shots of the figure throughout this video review so that everyone can appreciate just how majestic this thing actually is. Uh, I think that's gonna do it for me. Um, again, thanks for tuning in. And a thank you to Mattel for sending me this amazing, amazing figure. So happy that I can get, get a review out for it and share it with everybody. Again, this figure's coming out in the fall. I'm Tim with Collect Jurassic. Thanks again for watching.